All right, 10.4, we're talking about disjoint and overlapping events, and the definition of those things is just what they sound like. Uh, if two events are disjoint, there's no way that they could happen, um, that one event could could be both of these things. So let's, let's explain that a little bit. Uh, king and uh, a two. Okay, so this section, 10.4, as opposed to 10.5, which is different and probably... Uh, you, you had some experience here, and, and there could be uh, some confusion possible. We're talking about in 10.4 doing one thing, not two things in a row, but one thing. Okay, so when you say this or that, we mean that that this one event could be something or it could be something else. When we say this and that, we don't mean that this happens and then this happens, but that this thing could be one thing or the other, um, or it could be one thing and the other at the same time. And that's what disjoint and, and overlapping is talking about. Okay, so disjoint, that would be where the event described has to be this thing or the other thing. There is no possibility that you pick a card and it's a king and a two. No way, okay? But with a king, okay, I so said, what's the probability of picking a king or a spade? Okay, well, would I draw it like this? No, because you know what? There is one card at least and definitely there is exactly one card the king of spades that is both at the same time so this one card is the king of spades it is a king it is a spades it is both things at the same time okay so that's what we talk about with disjoint and overlapping there's no overlap between kings and twos but there is overlap between kings and spades there's overlap between twos and spades there's overlaps between um, number, or sorry, cards that are uh, high, say lower than, um, that, let's say they're not face cards, okay, cards that are not face cards, okay, uh, I think you would just call those number cards, okay, uh, so not face cards and even numbered cards, even numbered, okay, there, there is overlap there. Cards that are not face cards and even numbered cards. Well, there's the uh, two card, the four card, the six card, the eight card, and the ten card in each suit. Okay, so uh, there's five of them there in each suit. Five times four. There's twenty cards that are both of these things. Okay, but again, there's no overlap between kings and twos. There's no overlap between spades and diamonds. You can't have a card that's a spade and a diamond at the same time. So when it says this and that, it means this would be and. If this is king and spade, this is. Uh, not face and even, right? Two is two, four, six, eight, and ten are all those. All right. So here we go. Let's uh, talk about this. If they're disjoint, then there is no overlap. Which uh, the shortest way to say that is the probability of A and B, meaning that this one event, this one thing that we do, is two things at once: is a king and a spade, is a not face card and an even number. Okay. Well, if it's disjoint, the probability of A and B is not, there isn't one. There is no possible way that with a disjoint event or two disjoint events that you'll have uh, one thing be two at once, be a king and a spade or whatever. There's, n there's no overlap here. So the probability of A and B is zero. That's what disjoint means. Probability of A and B, it's impossible. It can't happen. Again. Well, there's a, a formula there. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. I'll explain that minus part later. But in this case, it's zero. So actually, there is no minus anything. There's, there's nothing there. So probability of A or B is just the probability of A plus the probability of B. So the probability of A is 0.3 plus the probability of B is 0 0.5, 0 0.8 is the probability of A or B. You think about it, if, if something is 30% likely to happen and another thing is 50% likely to happen, and like there's no way that you're going to uh, get some overlap there or, or pick a card or pick a number or pick a door or whatever that uh, could be both things at the same time, then there's you're just going to add them both together. right? So let's, let's look at a picture of it. Always 100% or, or 1 is the maximum, right? From If we represent this as a, like an area, 100% probability is everything. There's nothing beyond 100% probability. 
there's more than 100% increase and all that kind of stuff. But as far as probability goes, absolutely not. There's not more than 100% chance that something will happen. Either something is 100% guaranteed or, well, that's the most it can be, right? Um, you're not more than 100% likely to pick a six out of a deck of cards or to even pick a card out of a deck of cards. Uh, so anyway, um, let's see. There's B. It's 0.5. And A is 0.3, and we know that it doesn't overlap, so it's not like it can come into the, the area, the space of, of where B can happen. A happens all, you know, over here, disjoint, completely not overlapping with B. Here's A. So how likely is it that A or B will happen? Well, here's this little tiny space where A, uh, neither A or B happen, you know. Let's, let's get rid of that. Well, that's apparently 0.2, right? So if we just add 0.3 and 0.5, we'll get the 0.8 total probability that those guys take up. Right. Now, overlapping. Overlapping means there's some overlap, meaning that uh, here, let's say this is 100%. You know, A can happen uh, this much of the time. B can happen uh, some other times, right? But it can also overlap with A. So B, you know, B can happen without A happening, but A and B could possibly happen um, in the same event, right? So that would be like getting the uh, king or getting a spades. Uh, let's change it to a club. So I could get a king or I could get a, a club or I could get the king of clubs, right? That, there's some overlap there. So that's why probability of A and B actually exists. Okay, it actually has a value. So let's just use the formula, and find what we're looking for, and then we'll talk about it. So we've got the probability of A or B is equal to the probability, that's not the letter P, the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Okay, uh, so let's just use this formula find probability of A or B, right? So that's what we're looking for. Uh, so it is 0.3 plus 0.5. We just follow each piece of this minus uh, 0.17. So that's 0.8 minus 0.17. So that's going to be 0 0.63. Yeah, 0 0.63. So that's how likely it is that one or the other will happen. Okay, And here's why we take this piece away. I'm going to draw a Venn diagram. Here is all the ways that A can happen, okay? And you would think it's kind of natural to take, let's take how likely it is that A will happen, how likely it is that B will happen, and we'll just add them together, okay? And that's great if it's disjoint, but if it's, if it's overlapping, then when we take A, the probability, so this area represents the probability that A will happen, and this area right here represents the probability that we B would happen. If I add A, okay, which is uh, this blue stuff, okay, and then I add to it B, notice that some of this blue stuff is overlapped with this pink stuff. And also, some of this pink stuff is over overlapped with this blue stuff. When I count A, I'm counting a little bit of B. And when I count B, I'm counting a little bit of A. So if I add this together, I'm going to wind up with this piece, this blue and pink piece. I'm going to wind up counting that two times. Right? If I add A plus B, I'll have counted this little thing twice. So then we'll, what we'll do is uh, we'll take away one of those guys. And that way we won't have counted it twice. We'll only have counted it once. Okay. So that's the reason behind that whole thing. That's why we take away one of those, because in adding A and B, A had this little piece, B had this little piece. So we don't want to count that piece twice, so we take one of those pieces away, and then we'll have it. Okay, Same kind of a problem here, but we want to find the probability of A and B. So we get the probability of A or B equals probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, and A and B is what we're looking for. That looks good. Okay. 
Um, so we have this, we have this, we have this, but we want to know what this is. So let's just plug things in that we know. A or B is 3 fourths. A is 4 fifths. B is 6 sevenths. And if we subtracted, or if we added these together and we subtracted the probability of A and B, we would get 3 fourths. So we'll just solve for probability of A and B. Right? And to make it positive, I'll add this. Add probability of A and B. And I'll add the probability of A and B. And I'll subtract 3 fourths from both sides. So the probability of A and B is equal to 4 fifths plus 6 sevenths minus 3 fourths. So you have to find a common denominator for all of them. That's probably the uh, common denominator for 5, 7, and 4. Uh, well, unfortunately, it's going to be 5 times 7 times 4. There's just no way around that. So what's 5 times 7 times 4? We got uh, 35 times 4. That's 120. That's 140. Well, let's double check that. I don't trust it. 5 times 7 times 4. And 140. Okay. So we're going to have to multiply 4 by 28. 4 times 28 to get that common denominator. 112 over 140 plus 6 times uh, 20. So uh, 120. 120 out of 140. Minus 3 times 35. So that's 70, 105 out of 140. So we add all that together, 112 plus 120 minus 105. 127 out of 140. All right, so that is the probability that, that you could do whatever is happening here and wind up getting A and B at the same time in the same thing, OK? This is like So this would be similar to, um, you know, drawing a king that's also a spade. It would be the, uh, the overlap. So the overlap here of A and B is 127 out of 140. That's the probability that um, they'll happen, you know, that, that that event will be those two things at the same time. It will be A and it will be B. It will be a king and a spade. It will be uh, a ball and it will be red. It will be a red ball, different things like that. Okay, so this guy right here, a line over it, just is read the complement of A. So it's that, that just means the probability that A does not happen. So the rest of the time, the total is 1. That's always the, the maximum probability, 1, or in percentages is 100%. Um, but in decimal, it's 1. So that's the probability of an event plus the probability of that event not happening. right? Either it happens or it doesn't. And so that's what the complement means. Uh, so 1 is equal to 1 third plus the thing we're looking for. So it's whatever is left when you take 1 third from 1. So probability of the complement of A, or A complement, is 2 thirds. Um, so we're going to draw a card. What's the probability that it is even or a spade? That we get an even card or a spade. Uh, so remember, probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A. That's supposed to be A. Plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So then we have to we can find this pretty easily. Then we have to decide what's the probability that uh, those two things happen in the same card. So the probability of an even card, let's see, there are, uh, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. That's 5 cards. Uh, there's 4 suits, so there's 20 evens. So that'd be 20 out of the 52 cards are even. So the probability of drawing an even is 20 out of 52. The probability that you'll get a spade, there's 13 spades out of the 52. Okay, what's the probability that you'll get an even and a spade? Let's look at this Venn diagram real quick again. Here are the evens. That'd be uh, 
uh, yeah, two of hearts and two, uh, four of clubs and then there's the ten of uh, diamonds, right? All of the even cards in every suit. And then over here, we have the spades, right? We got the king of spades. We got the queen of spades. We got the jack of spades. We got the ace of spades. Then we have in here in the middle, overlapping between the two of them, is the two of spades, the four of spades, the six of spades, the eight of spades, and the ten of spades. Right? All of these would be spades. And over here would be all the evens that are not spades. So all the evens and all the other suits. So there are five cards that are both. Five out of 52. Right, because notice what we've done here is we've counted this twice. We added up all the evens. Well, some of those were spades. Then we lifted all the spades. Well, some of those were evens. So here you have uh, even spades, and here you have even spades. We've, we've added them twice. We've counted them twice. So we take one group away, and now we have the total. We added up this, and then we added up this, which means we got two of those. So we just took out one of those, say the one that I, I did with a down and to the right diagonal. We took away that uh, one of those middle pieces, one of those overlaps. And this is the overlap. Uh, so this is 33 minus 5, 28. 28 out of 52, so 14 out of uh, 26, uh, 7 out of 13. So that's the probability that you'll get an even or a spade. 7 or a face card. Okay, so the probability is of, uh, of A plus B minus probability of A and B. So what's the probability of getting a 7? There are 4 7s out of 52 cards. There are how many face cards? Well, there's three in each suit. There's four suits. There's 12. 12 face cards. Okay. Minus the probability that you'll get a seven that's also a face card. Well, there are no sevens that are also face cards. A face card, by definition, is uh, uh, not the ace or a number card. It's a face card. Um, so there is no overlap. So when I add 4 over 52 to 12 out of 52, neither one of these has any part of the other in it. There are no sevens that are also face cards. There are no face cards that are also seven cards. So that's not going to happen. So altogether, we have 16 out of 52, 8 out of 26, 4 out of 13. There we go. Um, which, incidentally, is how many seven or face cards there are in each suit of 13 cards. Uh, what's the probability of getting a 7 and a 9? So we're not talking about or, we're talking about and. Um, similar to the previous problem where we talked about seven or a face card, the and part of it was empty. There was no possibility of getting a seven and a face card. There's also no probability of getting a seven and a nine. Okay, so the probability of getting a seven and a nine is absolutely never going to happen. Okay, what's the probability of getting a card that's not a face card? Okay, uh, well, there's no and, there's no or, it's just uh, describing a uh, type of card that we're going to draw. Um, it's going to not be a face card. How many cards are not face cards? Um, well, it'd take a lot to count this up. Maybe what we'll do is we'll count up the face cards. What's the probability of getting a face card? Well, 12 out of 52, right? Um, and the other possibility is that you will not get a face card, okay? So we add this, to this getting a face card to not face card, right, that probability, we should get the whole thing, one. You get it or you don't, and if you add up all the possibilities between the two of them, you should get 100%. You're either guaranteed to get a face card or not a face card. So if we take one minus 12 out of 52, that's 52 out of 52, minus 12 out of 52, that is 40 out of 52, that's uh, 10 out of 13. Um, that may be how many cards out of each suit of 13 that are not face cards. Okay. Um, we've got the probability of A, probability of B, probability of A or B, probability of A and B is zero. We're supposed to first find probability of A and state whether it's joint or disjoint. Um, well, disjoint or overlapping would be the, uh, the opposite of that. Um, well, I'll, as always, probability of A 
for b equals the probability of a a plus probability of b delta b minus probability of a and b. Well, there is no a and b. It's 0. So 0.38 plus 0.65 equals point. Uh, I did not print this out very well. Here, let's change this a bit. Because we're about to get over 100%, which is impossible. So let's do 0.55. If there was some overlap, that could be possible because then some of it is, uh, you know, going to be taken away. But if we just add 0.38 plus 0.55 or 0.65, we're going to get over 100 percent. We're over one. So 0.38 plus 0.58 is going to be 0 0.94. 0 0.94. So pretty likely that A or B is going to happen. Um, probability of A and B is zero. That's the definition of being disjoint. So it's disjoint. If probability of A and B is not zero, then it's not disjoint. It's overlapping. All right, so same formula again. So we take one third plus one half. We subtract the probability of A and B. Well, we don't know what it is, so we're going to find it. Probability of A or B is 5 sixths. Okay, so let's see. We're going to take, we'll subtract 5 sixths from both sides. Sixths. Then we'll add the probability of A and B. It's a variable like x, like any other time. Probability of A and B. So one third plus one half minus five sixths equals the probability of A and B. You find a common denominator, happens to be six. So this will be two sixths plus three sixths minus five sixths. Well, that's 5, 6 minus 5, 6 is 0. That's the probability of A and B happening. So this is also disjoint. It turns out the probability of A or B is just the sum of probability of A and probability of B, and probability of A and B is 0. Um, so it's disjoint. Um, so I just put this one straight from the book. I didn't change it at all, but I'm not also not going to just answer it. Uh, so we're going to describe a real-life situation that involves two disjoint events and describe a real-life situation that involves two overlapping events. So you just want to think, if it's disjoint, okay, think, you know, make sure this is clear to yourself. We are talking about one thing. One thing happens. We draw one card. We draw one, you know, uh, marble out of a bag of marbles. We draw, uh, what, one number out of 1 to 50, whatever it is. We do with this one thing. And we want to see, we want to figure out for disjoint, we want to make it so that uh, there's two possibilities, um, and it's not possible for those two things to happen together. Okay, so go back and look at the examples of disjoints, ones that we've talked about. Uh, I talked about it at the beginning of this video. Uh, and come up with another example. If you're hard pressed for an example, just think about cards, okay? So think about cards, and, and you're going to draw one card, all right? Think about two attributes that that card could have, you know, possible attributes that you uh, that a card could have that you draw. It could be a king, it could be a spade, it could be a queen, it could be a seven, it could be an even, it could be bigger than something, smaller than something, a face card, not a face card, all these different things. Um, think of two different things, and for disjoint, make sure that those two things uh, cannot be true about this card at, at the same time, okay? And I gave examples of that at the beginning of the video, so take a, take a look at that. Um, for your overlapping events, we want to pick two things where they could be, you know, said about that one card. Those two things could be true about this one card there. If we were to draw it, we would have overlap. We would have a possible, like, it could be this and it could be that at the same time. Okay? And just a, a, a you know, a message from the future, this A and B thing, it's unfortunately used in the next section for a different kind of a thing. So this A and B means this one thing, not two things, but just this one thing, this one card, this one ball, this one number, uh, has two things that are true about it at the same time. That's A and B, OK? Um, and this is also A and B, but this is just that there's no possibility that they could be the same thing, that they could be true about the same card. Um, so go back, look at the examples from the rest of the video. Um, 
think about cards, think about a card that you could pull that is, it's this thing and it's also this thing, okay? That would be, that would be uh, uh, overlapping. And then think about, um, well, it's this thing, and if it's this thing, it couldn't be this other thing. And if it's this thing, it couldn't be this first thing. That would be disjoint. It can't be both of those things, all right? So cards are a great example. You can make up your own example, numbers from 1 to 50. Some numbers are this and they're that, and some numbers are this, and they couldn't possibly be the other thing. Okay, so give that some thought. All right, last one. Um, we're looking at the probability of, well, of something. So let's look at this problem. Um, you'll notice the similarities between this and the problem in the book. Um, they use lights. I'm using households. They're using fluorescent and incandescent. I'm using two different kinds of information that they give the, the households. So, um, and this is based on some things that have actually been done in, uh, I think it was Australia. They uh, sent different households different information um, to see um, what information caused a you know a drop in household power usage? Um, so these are some of the things that they would tell people. Uh, so on a block with forty households, uh, fifteen were told that using less energy would save them money. Twenty-one of them were told that using less energy would help save the planet. So using less energy saving the planet. Um, and seven were told both of those things. So you can imagine they just have people going around hanging things on doorknobs or putting things in windshields, whatever. Um, not in the windshields, but under the windshield wipers. It's a little less uh, aggressive. Um, so 15 were told this, 21 were told that, and, and seven, right, of each of these, like seven of these guys were also told this thing, told that the seven, or 15, seven of these 15 people were told that they'll save the planet. 21 people, uh, or seven of the 21 people were told that they were, were going to save money also. Okay, so what is the probability that the household is told either they will save money or they will save the planet? Well, we got the probability of either that would be this or that, A or B, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Okay, well, we'll consider A being saving money and B being saving the planet. So here's a planet. Okay, and A and B would be that they were told they'll save money and that they'll help save the planet. Right. That's a planet. That's our planet, by the way. Um, so what's the probability that they were told one or the other? Um, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. A or B. Just follow the formula here. Uh, what's the probability that they'll be told that they'll save money? Well, 15 of the 40 were told that. So if you randomly were to stop somebody on that block and ask them if they were told that they would save money, uh, the probability is 15 out of 40. I'm going to draw a 5. There we go. 15 out of the 40 was told that, plus the probability that they were told that they'll help save the planet. Well, that was 21 out of the 40. Okay, notice I said 7 of the 15 were also told this, and 17 uh, or 7 of the 21 were also told that. So we need to take one of those away. That's 7 out of 40. That's the probability that they were told both things. Uh, so that is, um, let's see, 36 minus 7, 29 out of 40. Uh, 29 is prime, so that's as simple as it'll get. 29 out of 40 is the probability that they'll be told uh, either that they'll help, that they'll save money or that they'll be helping to save the planet. Okay, so um, almost three fourths of the people will get one of those pieces of information. Um, and that's how that works. So apply that same idea to, to plants being given different kinds of light rather than household being given different kinds of information, and you got it. Um, I believe that is all. That is all. That was the last one. So uh, I appreciate you watching, and if you need any help, just let me know.